If you use the standard algorithm to divide, that's just the long division algorithm. 24 does not fit into 3, but it does fit into 30 one time. 30 minus 24 is 6. 24 fits into 62 times, that would give us 48. 10 minus 8 is 2. 5 minus 4 is 1. There's a decimal here, so make sure it's lined up in your correct place value. And 24 fits into 120 exactly five times. So here for number 3, it should say 12.5 or 12.5. Please complete problems 1 and 2. Consider the following two fractions, 7 25ths and 3 elevenths. Without using division, express, express each fraction in decimal form if possible. In the last lesson, we saw that if you can create a denominator that is made up of twos and fives, then you can write it in the decimal fraction. So since I have two fives, I need two twos to be multiplied in to turn them both into tens. This would be a 10, and this would be a 10. 10 times 10 is 100. 7 times 2 is 14. 14 times 2 is 28. So this is 0 0.28. Now, 3 elevenths, 11 can't be split into 2s and 5s. It's already prime. So this one cannot be written as a decimal fraction. So at this point we don't have any other skills to try besides long division, so we're going to try that in part B. We have 7 divided by 25. 25 doesn't fit into 7, but it does fit into 70. That would give us 50. To bring down the zero and 25 fits into 200 eight times 25 50 75 100 125 150 175 200 for 3 elevenths 11 doesn't fit into 3 but it does fit into 30 two times which gives us 8 left over it fits into 80 seven times, giving us three. And then 11 fits into 30 two times, giving us 22. That would leave us with eight. We would bring down another zero and we'd keep getting two, seven, two, seven. So this is going to be two, seven repeating. So as soon as the remainder of 8 and 3, and 8 and 3 pop up over and over again, we know that this is going to be a repeating decimal. When we see that repeating remainder, we can stop. When we divide and see repeating remainders, like we saw in 3 elevenths, the repeating remainder indicates that the decimal is a repeating decimal instead of what we call a terminating decimal, meaning that it stops. Like 0 0.5 stops, so we consider that a terminating decimal. All of the decimals that we worked with yesterday that had a denominator made up of twos and fives were terminating decimals. So let's look at these and sort them into two categories. Terminating, meaning it stops, and repeating, meaning that it has a repeating pattern. So one-third. That denominator cannot be broken up into twos and fives, so that is going to be a repeating decimal. 16 can be split into 4 times 4, and those can be split into 2 times 2, so this is just a product of multiple twos, which, like I said in yesterday's lesson, if it was a 2 or a 5 in the denominator, then it would terminate. So this one is a terminating decimal. 8, that can be 4 times 2, and 4 can be split into 2 times 2, so it is just 2's in the denominator as well. 30, 
that is 3 and 10. 10 can be split into 2 and 5, but this 3 is not a 2 or a 5, so that's going to go into the repeating decimal. Twelve can be split into four times three. Four is split into two and two, but this three here. But remember we talked yesterday that we have to reduce our fractions first. So let's do that part first. If I divide by three, that would be ten in the top and four in the denominator. So then it is just a product of twos. For 10 ninths, 9 can be split into 3 times 3, but no 2s or 5s. 25 can be split into 5 and 5, so that is going to be a terminating decimal. 22, we can reduce this. This would become negative 4 over 11. And we saw 11 cannot be split up because it's a prime number. So no 2s or 5s out of that one. What do you notice about the denominators of the rational numbers in each category? The terminating decimals all have denominators that contain only factors of 2s and 5s. For problems 4 through 6, use the long division algorithm to find the decimal form of the following rational numbers. Remember, as soon as you see a repeating remainder, that's an indication that you, you don't have to continue. Your, the decimals you have there are just going to continue to repeat. I'm going to do number four on video, and then I'm going to pause it, or have you pause it, so you can try five and six on your own. So three does not fit into two, so we put a zero. Behind the two, there is a decimal. Three fits into 20. Six times, three times six is 18. That leaves us with two. Bring down the zero, but wait, we just had a 20. Three fits into 20, six times. We got another remainder of two, so we can stop. This is 0 0.6 repeating. Try number five and six on your own. Pause here to give yourself time to complete that long division, then come back and check your answer. I went ahead and highlighted the repeating remainder so you can see when it starts to repeat in the decimal. For problems 7 through 10, input each rational number into your calculator as a division expression. Record the answer that the calculator displays, then write the number precisely by using the bar notation. So, on your calculator, you're going to type in 1 divided by 3, 7 divided by 9, 7 divided by 12, and 1 divided by 11. Your calculator doesn't have an endless display. So it might repeat, and then it might round up at the end because it's run out of room. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't continue to repeat. It's just your way of the calculator showing that it has to round up at the end because it's run out of space. So it can't continue to repeat forever on the display. However, the decimal does continue to repeat. So mine displays for 1 divided by 3, 0 0.33333. 3. But with the bar notation, it should look like this. The 3 is the repeating piece. 7 divided by 9. My calculator shows 0 0.777778. Like I said, it's repeating, but your calculator says, I've run out of room. I can't write another 7, so I'm going to round to an 8. This is just 0 0.7 repeating. 7 twelfths is 0 0.583333. The 5 and the 8 do not repeat, so it don't, don't put the line over the 5 or the 8, just over the 3.
1 divided by 11 displays as 0 0.0909. 0, 9. Yours may have a 1 after it. That's because it's rounding up. The 9 would make the 0 round up to a 1. But it is going to continue to repeat 0, 9, 0, 9. Both the 0 and the 9 are repeating, so put the line over both. So what happened in the video? Why do you think they received bills with different amounts? In the video, the total was $20. And they had to split it amongst three people. Let's look at why they received different bills. 20 divided by 3. 3 does not fit into 2, but it does fit into 20 six times. And it fits into 20 six times. And it fits into 20 six times. And that's going to continue on. If we charged everybody $6.66, 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 1 is 19, 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 1 is 19. So if they charge everybody $6.60 or 66 cents, they would get $19.98, which is not enough to pay for the $20 bill. So their other option is to charge everybody. The next penny would be $6.67. 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21. 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. Plus 2 more makes 20. 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 2 is 20. So if they charge everybody $6.67, they pay an extra penny. So the only way to split this amongst three people using pennies is for them to pay different amounts. They can get super close where they would have one that pays $6.66 and one that pays $6.67 to even it out to $20, but we don't have a third of a penny. So we can't split up that extra penny amongst three people. We don't have a coin or a, a value that would allow us to break up that penny, or in this case, the two pennies that we need amongst the three people.
please make sure that your warm-up is complete and your workbook is filled in for this lesson. Have a great rest of your day.